In this lesson, we're gonna learn how to build a nav menu using only CSS. So this can be used for a lot of different things from accordions to modals or anything else where we need to toggle on and off an element. And the beauty of this was we're able to build it completely with CSS. Let's get started. So to get started, let's add a div and give it the class of nav wrap. Under settings, we'll give this a tag of header, which is a common tag to use for the outer part of the nav that might hold a search box or a language switcher or anything else. And the nav tag should only directly wrap navigation links. So we'll leave this set to header. And inside of that, we'll add a div with the class of nav contain, and we'll give this a uContainer class so it has padding, max width, and margin auto. Inside that, let's add a link block with the class of nav logo. Under settings, let's give this an attribute of aria-label, and the value will say go to home page. So when screen readers focus on that link, they know where it's gonna go. Now inside that, let's add our logo component, and we'll select the link block and give that a width of something like eight rim. And once we have that set inside the container, let's go ahead and add a custom element. And we'll go ahead and give this a class of button, and let's select the container and we'll apply a flex um, align center, double click to space between and give it a gap of one rim so the two elements never touch. Now inside this, let's add a custom element and let's set the tag on this to say menu. And once we have that set, let's also go ahead and drop in an icon component that I have, which is just this dot icon. And my button here is set to a flex with a gap. So the two stack side by side. Now inside this button, we want a checkbox and we're gonna use a custom element for that. And we'll go ahead and give it a tag of input. So it's just a form field, but we'll give it an attribute type and the value will be checkbox to convert it over to a checkbox. Now let's select the button and give that a position relative. And we'll go ahead and select the checkbox, give that a class of nav checkbox. And let's give this a position absolute to cover its full parent 100% width and 100% height. And then once we have that set, we can now actually tab onto this checkbox. If we hit space, it'll check or uncheck. We can also click to do that. But what we want to do is hide the actual checkbox. Now, if we turn its opacity down, we would no longer be able to tab on or focus on that element. So instead under custom properties, we'll add appearance none, which hides the checkbox styling while still allowing us to focus on it. Now, when we're focused on it, we want the border radius of that checkbox to match the border radius of its button. So let's give this a custom property border radius and a value inherit. So this will just allow it to inherit from its parents border radius. Even if we change the radius of the menu button on hover, uh, it, that child checkbox inside will always match its parents radius. So now that we have that set, we want whenever a screen reader user focuses on this checkbox, we need some kind of label to let them know what this checkbox is for. So in this case, we're gonna select our button and change its tag to be label, and we'll select the text inside and give this a tag of span. Now, usually we would have form elements outside of the label. So any form fields would be outside of that label. And to connect the correct label to the correct field, we would give it an attribute of four and then a custom name like menu. And on the actual field, we would give it an ID of menu. And that way it would know that these two elements are connected. But what we can do instead with any form field, doesn't have to be a checkbox, is we can put it inside the label tag and that way it's automatically connected to that label uh, without us having to actually do any sort of unique ID. So when the user focuses on this checkbox, it will read the text inside of this parent label. So now that we have that set inside the nav, let's add a div with the class of nav, we'll call it menu wrap. And let's go ahead and give this a position of absolute to the top of its parent and a height 100 VH. We'll give it overflow auto so that on shorter screen heights, if the text overflows out of this, we can actually scroll inside our menu. And let's also go ahead and give this just a background color. Now we will also need to give this a tag of nav since this is what's going to directly hold our nav links. If a screen reader user is just tabbing specifically through the nav tags throughout the page, it'll take them directly to this element without them having to tab through the menu button and other things that aren't necessarily nav links. Let's give this uh, contain a position relative Z index two, So it's on top of our menu. 
And inside the menu, let's give this a class of nav menu contain, and we'll give it the same U container class so it has that padding and same max width. But we'll give this one a min height 100 VH so that if the text inside it is actually taller, it will allow this container to grow in height, be taller than screen height. And that will just make it overflow inside this menu and allow us to scroll inside the parent menu. So with the contain selected, let's apply a vertical flex that on Y aligns to center. Inside of that, let's add a list element. We'll say nav menu list. And on the item, we'll say nav menu item. Inside of that, let's go ahead and add a text link. We'll give this nav menu link. And let's go ahead and give it display block so it spans the full width. We want to give it a fluid font size based on the size of this list element. So with the list selected, we'll add a container dash type attribute and a value of inline dash size. And that way we could apply a fluid font size to any child and it will be based on the width of this list element. So if I were to go ahead and select this child, give it a custom width of something like maybe 12 container query width, then this text element is now based on the width of this list element. So if I cut the width of the list element in half, notice the text inside is growing and shrinking. So what I'll do on the next breakpoint is go ahead and increase this a little bit. I might say something like 10 or 20 container query width. And let's also reduce the letter spacing. Um, let's also reduce the line height a little bit. Let's change this text to say about. And let's also give it a bottom border. So if we add a bottom border of 1.5 pixels, we'll say white at maybe a 20% opacity. And let's go ahead and delete these other items. And then we'll duplicate this first item so that we have a work uh, link and also a contact link. So now that we have that set, we want this, um, basically this entire menu to be out of view by default. So what we can do is actually give it a transform that moves it on the Y. We'll say negative 50% of its own height. And let's just keep going all the way, negative 100%. But just opacity and the transform will be fine. And let's apply a transition. Um, we can apply to opacity, I'll do 400. And let's apply another transition to transform. I'll do 400 on that so that when we do reveal this element, it animates to be revealed. Let's also just enable this checkbox for a minute. So I'll take off the appearance none and let's open up our embed and we'll start by styling this nav wrap and we'll go ahead and give it a background color of red. So if we save that, it makes our nav wrap background color red. Now we can style the nav wrap element only when it has a child with a certain class. In this case, we'll style the nav only when it has a child with the class of nav checkbox. So if we save that, notice that this is red, but if we move the nav checkbox outside of the nav, the background color is no longer red on our nav. If we put this child back into the nav, the nav now becomes red again. So not only do we wanna check if the nav has this child, but we also wanna check if the child is actually checked. And if so, that's when we'll make the entire nav red. So if we go ahead and save this, now as soon as we check this, the nav background turns red, uncheck, it goes back. But we don't wanna actually style this nav wrap. We wanna style the menu element and that is not a parent of the checkbox, totally unrelated element. So what we can do is copy this menu wrap and just as an example, we can style any child. So for instance, if I wanted to style the nav logo and I wanted to give that a color of red, that's going to apply to the nav logo no matter what. But I could say style that nav logo only when it's inside of the nav bar. And the space here allows us to style this child when it's inside of this parent nav bar. So for instance, this logo is red, but if I take that and move it out of the nav bar, it's no longer red. We're only styling this logo when it's inside of this parent. So that space between the two classes is what allows us to do that. So right now we're styling the entire nav when it has a child that is checked, but we don't want to style this actual nav element. We want to style the menu inside of the nav. So we can paste in our menu class and this menu will only be affected when it's inside of this parent that has a checked child. 
So now that we have that set, let's go ahead and turn the opacity on our menu back to full and we'll apply a transform that translate uh, Y and we'll move it back to 0% on the Y axis. So now if we save that, whenever we check this, the menu slides down, uncheck the menu slides up. So we have this animation working. Let's go ahead and add appearance none back onto our checkbox so we can hide that for now. And let's also go ahead and style our menu. So I'm just going to turn the opacity up for a minute on this menu. And what I wanna do is when I hover over one of these menu links, I want to gray out the other sibling links. So what we can do, let's go ahead and say, we'll style our nav bar, but only when it has a child menu link that is being hovered. So whenever we're hovering any menu link, we're styling this nav bar when it has that child link being hovered. And what we can do, let's just go ahead and turn the opacity on the nav bar down to like 30%. So nav bar opacity is normal. We hover any link, entire nav changes to 30% opacity. But now we want to style only the links that are not currently being hovered. So just like right here, we style the menu when it was inside of this parent nav. Here we're gonna style the links when they're inside of the parent nav that has a child being hovered. And instead of turning all the links down to zero opacity, we'll say only the link that is not being hovered. So here we're styling all menu links inside of the nav bar only the ones that are not being hovered. And let's go ahead and save that. So if I hover any link, it grays out the siblings just like that. So I know this code uh, feels a little bit complex. So if we review it one more time, anytime we have a nav bar that has a menu child link being hovered, we're gonna find all the other links inside the nav bar that are not being hovered and we're gonna style only those other links. So that's kind of the way that this code works. There's a lot that can be done with the has uh, selector and not and all of that. And even with this simple uh, checkbox, there's a lot we can build from accordions to modals or any kind of interaction we want using that there. So I'll go ahead and turn this menu wrap back to being hidden, but now we have a fully functional menu interaction we were able to build with only CSS.